Welcome to our lab tour. My name is Jan Dincher. I'm a junior research group leader at FIT and IMTECH University of Freiburg. Um, my group works on the implementation of various disposable microsystems for different applications like diagnostics, especially point of care testing and variables. Let's start the tour. Hello everyone, I'm Malara and I'm doing my master thesis at uh, Disposable Microsystems Lab on paper-based sensors for monitoring of diseases. The fabrication process of my chips are fairly easy. Uh, I just need to print out uh, my wafers using a wax printer like this. And after some screen printing and baking processes, the finalized version of my chips looks something like this. My setup here simulates the actual breathing of a person and gives us a chronon parametry measurement like you see from the screen here. And the final goal of my project is to integrate these chips to conventional masks like this and achieve glucose measuring in exiled bread. Hi, I'm Nadine. I'm a PhD student in this lab. And in one of my projects, I'm working with plant photoreceptors that can interact with each other in a light-dependent manner to build an optically controlled bioassay. Once the system has been established, we want to implement it in a microfluidic environment to build a point-of-care device. For this reason, we already constructed a 3D printed box that allows for illumination with red or far red light to which the photoreceptors respond. The LEDs can be controlled with a smartphone and also samples can be taken that can be later evaluated. Hello, my name is Regina and I just finished my master's degree in microsystems engineering. Now I'm working as a scientific researcher in disposable microsystems group and the field I'm working on are multiplex biosensors for on-site therapeutic drug monitoring. Here we are in our clean room. It's a shared clean room of whole IMTEC. It has an area of 600 square meter and the clean room class can be varied between 4 and 7 through an individually controllable filter system. We are using this clean room for three steps of our wafer fabrication. On one side we are using an O2 plasma step to clean our metallization. We are using a physical vapor deposition process to deposit our metallization on our wafers. And moreover, we're using a photolithography step where we spin coat our photoresist on our wafer. Hi, my name is Midori and I'm working as a PhD student at IMTEC and my project is about CRISPR-based diagnostics. Welcome to our yellow room. This is where we do most of the fabrication steps for our chips because we work with a lot of photosensitive materials, which is why we can't have regular daylight. This, for example, is the hood where we do our silver deposition for our reference electrodes. These are some of the DFR layers that make up the microfluidic chip. This is where most of the development of those happen. Here we spin coat our photoresist. Next, we've got the UV exposure unit, which we predominantly use to expose all of our DFR layers before developing them. This is what we use for the Teflon dispensation to build up the stopping barriers. This right here is our big laminator compared to our small laminator, which we use to laminate all of the DFR layers onto the prepared wafers prior to baking them for three hours in our oven. Hello everyone, I am Gözde. Currently, I am working as a postdoc researcher at the Disposable Microsystems Group. My research focuses on microfluidic electrochemical immunoassay development for the on-site measurement of hormone levels of a living animal. In our group, we mainly produce two types of chips, MeLab and Multilab. After the chip production was achieved, we proceed with the assay development and then measurement stages. Although our assays may vary depending on the type of the target analyte, such as antibiotics, proteins, nucleic acids or hormones, we all follow similar incubation and washing steps while the assay development. First, we modify the incubation area of the chips with proper biomolecules by incubating them for a certain period of time. Afterwards, we apply a vacuum from the inlet to wash the unbound molecules away before moving on with the next incubation step. Once all of the incubation steps are completed, we are ready for the measurement. 
To be able to analyze more than one analyte in one channel, we recently developed multiplex biosensors. With these, it is possible to do multi-sample or multi-analyte measurements on one chip. Hi, my name is Ceren. I'm a PhD student at Imtech. In our lab, I am currently developing microelectronic systems and variables for on-site monitoring of analytes. Here, we are using laser cutting machine for producing chip integration parts or in the near future, fabricating polymer-based sensors. With this approach, we can produce hundreds of sensors and units in a single batch. In our lab, we like to test new ideas, so prototyping is a critical step in our research. We are using 3D printer for such research purposes, like prototyping these chip holders in advance or producing washing adapters. Each sensor that we produce, multiplex or single channel, requires a tailored microfluidic and electrochemical connections for its specific design objective. We are using milling machine to manufacture our chip holders, which enables us to satisfy the high precision requirements for these connections. After the chips are prepared for the measurements, we glue a PMA adapter on them to on one side make the fluidic connection possible and on the other side stabilize the chip. Then we place the chip in our custom-made chip holder and connect it fluidically. The connection is from our solution to the pump and the pump is here to pump the liquid through the chip. Moreover, we have a PCB and the potential state for the electrical connection and the computer to apply our program and read out the measurement results. What I like the most about Microtas is the diverse background of the participants. At Microtas, I have the opportunity to share my work with other people from both academia and industry, which really helps me to gain a different and a better perspective about my research. I'm looking forward to join Microtas conference to share my results and my research with other people, but also to learn what other groups are working on, to see their results, learn new technologies and also get an input on my work. Hi, my name is Kiana Aran and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioengineering here at Keck Graduate Institute. In my lab, we are at the front line of science and technology. We develop next generation CRISPR-based devices for a variety of applications. We also develop organ and chip devices to understand the aging process as well as drug discovery applications. For most of our projects, we collaborate with industrial partners as well as academic partners. Let's walk through the lab and learn more about some of our innovative projects. Hi, I'm John Linda Castro, and I'm a PhD candidate within the Iran Lab and work on aging research with our academic collaborators at UC Berkeley and UC San Francisco. One of the main focuses of our aging research is investigating the role that different blood components have on aging, specifically erythrocytes and blood-based nanoparticles known as exosomes that may have previously unknown effects on brain health or may carry secret messages to and from cells between different age groups and people with different neurodegenerative diseases. Without relying on traditional microfluidic technologies, we have recently developed an innovative blood green barrier organ on a chip device termed microelectrical BBB. In collaboration with our colleagues at UC Berkeley, we have used this system to understand the effects of erythrocytes on blood green barrier integrity. These findings are important because development of neurodegenerative diseases are increasing. However, there are little solutions to early treatment, which is when patients have better outcomes. Erythrocytes may have the potential to be therapeutic in some cases of poor brain health. 
we are now applying this technology to Alzheimer's and ALS patient samples with our collaborators at UC Berkeley and UC San Francisco with the goals of discovering novel treatments for neurodegenerative diseases. Hi, my name is Luke Gillis and I'm an electrical engineering student and research associate here at the Iran Lab. I primarily work with the engineering team where we work towards optimizing the usability of our instruments in close collaboration with industry partners. Hi, my name is Andres Romero. I'm a PhD candidate in the Aran Lab and I'm working on a National Science Foundation awarded project. We aim to develop the next generation of graphene field effect transistors to detect single molecule interactions through a novel high-speed nanoelectronic platform. Advancements toward single molecule interactions are critical in order to further the understanding of enzyme kinetics, specifically enzymes in the CRISPR-Cas complex family. Hello, my name is Reza Hajian. I have a PhD degree in Archaeochemistry and uh, working as a senior research scientist in Dr. Arno Lab at the Graduate Institute. I'm working on development of biosensors for uh, sponsored research projects. Hi, my name is Antonio Capasella and I'm a postgraduate research intern in the Iran Lab and I work on our industrial sponsored research projects. This research focuses on developing next generation CRISPR based biosensors. In this project, we work with our industry collaborator, Cardia Bio, as well as with world-renowned CRISPR experts at Vilnius University. The rapid detection of nucleic acids, made possible by CRISPR-based biosensors, has a wide variety of clinical applications, including the detection of various forms of cancer, the identification of genetic mutations, and the recognition of viral genetic material. Hello, my name is Maria Morafian. I am a postdoctoral scholar in Aran Laboratory. The primary focus of our research is to develop novel microfluidic platform to perform liquid biopsies of exosomes from different cell types. Exosomes play a significant role in cellular communication and can play a critical role in disease diagnosis and treatment. Our microfluidic device, we can control release of exosomes from healthy and unhealthy cells while also measuring the rate of release in different cell types. With an interdisciplinary team of chemists, biologists, and engineers, we aim to leverage microfluidic technology in order to identify new pathways of exosome biology. Hi, my name is Pam Amiri, and I'm a PhD candidate here in the Ron Lab. A common theme of our group is to miniaturize and improve upon existing technologies. For this project, we are seeking to develop a novel proteomic tool that can replace these larger gel-based proteomic techniques. And this new system that we're developing will not only be smaller and faster, but much more robust and sensitive. In my lab, we imagine what can be done with modern science and technology, and that is our driving force to developing innovative solutions for societal needs. Welcome to Eindhoven University of Technology Biomedical Engineering Department. I'm an assistant professor here and in my research group we integrate biological, chemical and microfluidic technologies to robustly interrogate, characterize and manipulate cellular activities. We collaborate cross-disciplinary researchers to develop methods that solve pressing unmet research and medical needs. We enjoy making, design and hands on development of microfluidic devices from scratch. We address major challenges in single-cell functional analysis for regenerative medicine in a high-throughput manner. We use microfluidics for that. Many of our experimental efforts efficiently produce large multi-parameter datasets. These are from, most of the time from key biological models that match well with advanced analytical methods. We try to improve medical implants. For instance, can we improve bonding of bone to this titanium hip implant. 
Or can we reduce encapsulation of catheter wires like this one? Or can we actually increase bonding of pelvic floor implants to the, adja to the adjacent tissue? This all that with design and modding. We use the software to make uh, the design of the photo mask and then we transfer it to the glass mask. And then we will use the film coating to do the spin coating and the clipping. And then after that, we do the baking with our hot plate and then exposure with our UV lamp. And this is for the uh, simple structure. And for more complex structures, we use the mask blender to do the alignment of different whippers. In the end, you will get a SU8 at the next step, we make an SUAT mask mold. Um, and from this SUAT wafer, we make a PDMS stamp. From, from the PDMS stamp, we can then next make an oval mold. And with the oval mold, we can perform hot embossing. With the hot embossing machine, we make a polystyrene topography. So we warm up the uh, polystyrene to the test temperature, pressure on it, and then eventually these sheets come out. And we can cut them out and put them in a well plate for cell cultures. We can also put the topographies in microfluidic chips. So we put them on the glass, then the polystyrene, and then the PDMS on top. This is our cell lab where we culture cells. And these are all incubators we use to do that. If you follow me around. Here we also have incubators that have space for microfluidic access, so we can pump in fluids and get them out, cool them, uh, warm them up as well. So after seeding the cells, we stain them using different biomarkers, and after we have done that, we put them under the microscope over here. Uh, this is a high throughput microscope, which can do several uh, things related to that. So it can make uh, stitchings of very large samples. It can also autofocus, and it can be used to uh, move to different spots on the topographies. And what we can see over here is uh, the results that come out. Um, so we see um, several different topographies which, which have been stained with uh, two different biomarkers. So the next part after the imaging is we first look into the images of the topo chip as you see here in this, uh, in this monitor. So we first individually watch each individual topo unit, whether there is uniform distribution and then chop up each individual unit from these images, just like as you see here. So for this, we use a cell, uh, software called Cell Profiler. It's an open access software where you can actually quantify the stainings of each individual markers that you generally have. So once that's done, we basically use the data that we segment from these images to actually rank and identify the outliers. So for that, what we do is we go through the machine learning uh, Python scripts, which we have, where we actually identify the outliers from each individual chip, because this is something which we need to do so that we can uh, delete all the outliers we have. And after that, we basically use the topographies from each individual screen and rank them based on their biomarkers. And after that, we perform a machine learning on them and we rank each individual topography and we use machine learning to see whether the trained model that we have from each individual topographies is performing well with our test controls. So by doing so, we can actually estimate whether our topographies are behaving as we expect them, as we see in these descriptors. In the past nine years, we share the same excitement when the fall comes. Then we know it is time for a micro test. This conference for us is a booth to meet with like-minded colleagues, network with the pioneers in the world in the field of microfluidics, and share our latest findings with this well-established community.